From Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. The number of cases in Bear County growing and continuing to grow. More people are dying as a result of the nursing home outbreak. Right now, there are 772 positive cases of COVID-19 in Bear County, and 30 people have passed away. Two of the deaths announced yesterday were people at the Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. Nearly one third of all the cases in the county are due to community spread. We're expecting the latest numbers coming up tonight around six o'clock, and we expect those numbers to be even higher. And the Senate Georgia Police Department releasing updated coronavirus numbers this noon. SAPD says they now have less officers in quarantine, only 13. There are still five cases where officers tested positive for COVID-19. 11 civilians are quarantined, a total of 24 SAPD personnel are now in quarantine. A nurse who tested positive for COVID-19 was in contact with the Bear County inmates as recently as Friday. That's according to an email sent to BCSO staff from Sheriff Javier Salazar and obtained by KSAT 12 News. That email states that the nurse was assigned to the South Tower and worked Thursdays and Fridays dispensing medicines to inmates. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf briefly spoke about this case on Sunday evening during his daily briefing with Mayor Ron Nuremberg. The nurse works with the university health system, but is assigned to the Bear County Jail. As the nation continues its battle against the COVID-19 pandemic, there are increasingly hopeful signs that New York, the epicenter of the virus in the U.S., may be succeeding in flattening the curve. That's good news, though other states are now seeing increases in their number of infected people. ABC's Inez Delicatera has more on the coronavirus pandemic in the country. This morning, some hopeful news coming from New York, where fewer people are having to go to the hospital to be treated for COVID-19. Though the crisis remains far from over, with the death rate stabilizing in the mid to high 700s. That's the so-called flattening of the curve. It has been flattening, but flattening at a terribly high level. Around the nation, new hotspots are now emerging. In Massachusetts, the number of confirmed cases soared by 21% over two days. In Pennsylvania, the governor predicted a surge this week after more than 2,800 new cases were reported Saturday. This, as one of the nation's top infectious disease experts, tells CNN if the Trump administration had responded earlier, lives likely could have been saved. If you had a process that was ongoing and you started mitigation earlier, you could have saved lives. Obviously, no one is going to deny that. But what goes into those kinds of decisions is, is complicated. That response not seeming to sit well with President Trump, who retweeted a message critical of Dr. Fauci that included the hashtag FireFauci. ABC's own George Stephanopoulos revealing he's tested positive for the coronavirus, but with no symptoms. Like I've never had a fever, never had chills, never had a headache, never had cough, never had shortness of breath. I'm feeling great. The CDC says roughly 25% of infected people here in the U.S. are asymptomatic. Other countries have found that number could be as high as 50%. And as for those direct relief payments, the first round of checks has already been sent out and some Americans report they have already received that money. In Esdela Delaquatera, ABC News, Washington. If you do leave your house, you may notice that there is construction still underway all over the place. Projects ranging from housing to streets and drainage, all of that apparently is deemed essential. As Max Massey shows us, this construction is crucial for our city now and for the future. We also have a housing shortage in San Antonio. So it's essential that we keep those projects moving along so that when we do get out of this crisis, people are, you know, do have places to, to, to live. Rod Sanchez is the assistant city manager, and he tells me there is almost $3 billion on the payroll of construction projects. And this is Museum Reach Apartments, set to have more than 90 units and low-income housing. As, as people are unemployed and they're working less hours, their incomes are less, so it's essential that we continue to build this type of housing so these people have a place to stay today and in the future. And it's not just building homes that's essential during these uncertain times. We're building new streets. We're also rebuilding streets that are in disrepair, so that's essential. Uh, sidewalks, 
people are walking and riding their bikes more than ever so we need to once again build sidewalks and these museum breach apartments are expected to be done by the end of the year with so many people staying home being safe and helping flatten the curve the assistant city manager tells me this is actually a perfect time for construction projects there's not a lot of traffic on the roads and not a lot of people on the road so we can move heavy equipment get it on the site fairly safely and, and not disrupt anything. There are precautions in place. Each construction worker here has been given the CDC guidelines and there is even a hand washing station on the premises. And for anyone listening, Rod Sanchez has a simple message. So please stay home, stay safe, and let's all get out of this together. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Also new this noon, GPS leads police to a stolen truck on the northeast side. And officers received a GPS hit in the 4800 block of Cornerway Boulevard. The person who owns the property allowed officers to investigate. They tell us the, that they found a stolen truck that appeared to have been picked for parts. A sergeant with SAPD tells us the person who owns the property told police that he regularly has mechanics on the property working on cars and he says he had no idea the vehicle was stolen. Right now that property owner is not facing any charges. Now to the latest on an officer-involved shooting that happened over the weekend. Police have identified the victim as, it, as being ruled a suicide. Officers were called to the 5200 block of Texana Drive to investigate a call about a burglary in progress. Police say the suspect, Andre Christian, kicked in a door at the apartment and chased after a woman who lives there, shooting towards her. Police say when officers got there, they told him to drop his weapon, but instead he fired at officers. An officer shot back, hitting the suspect. Police were able to take him into custody. He later died from his injury. A man shot on the west side yesterday has now died. San Antonio police say that this man was shot in the chest in the 2600 block of West Martin Street around 5 o'clock yesterday evening. SAPD says he and a woman went to confront people who they thought stole from them. Police say the victim got into a fight with four people. The victim had a gun, but was it was taken from him during the fight and he was shot. Several suspects were taken into custody, as you can see. We now know the name of a man killed. The medical examiner's office is identifying him as 20-year-old Christian Reitz. Bear County Sheriff's deputies responded to this shooting in the 11,000 block of Dublin Woods at around 3.45 yesterday morning. They found Reitz dead and a teenager shot. Deputies found shell casings in the street. Detectives are working to determine if the shooting was actually a drive-by. Right now, no word on any possible suspects. San Antonio police and crime stoppers need the public's help identifying a man they say attacked a realtor and drove off in her vehicle. According to an arrest affidavit, this man arrived at a home in the 300 block of Freeling with an unknown woman driving a single cab pickup. The man asked the realtor to see the home for sale. After the showing, the man pushed the victim down while she was locking the back door. The man then reportedly ran outside, got into the victim's vehicle, and drove away. If you have any information that could be helpful to police, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. A man is recovering with a gunshot wound to the leg this afternoon. According to San Antonio police, officers initially responded to the shooting around 9 last night on Rigsby near South WW White Road. They say they got there and didn't find a victim. They did find 15 casings from two different weapons, though. An hour and a half later, the victim called again, asked for help. He reportedly said he thought he twisted his ankle in a pothole and didn't realize he'd actually been shot. That incident is being investigated. The San Antonio River Authority has announced a portion of the Mission Reach Trail along the river walk will be closed to the public as crews repair erosion. The hike, bike, and paddling trails will all be closed during the repairs. The contractor will close the West Bank hike and bike trails from Lone Star Boulevard to the first pedestrian bridge. Pedestrians and cyclists can enter the trail from the East Bank at Lone Star Boulevard. Paddlers can enter the river at the Concepcion Park Access Point, travel south. The closure will take effect today through late July. And the NBA may get back on the court sometime this summer. Don't know when, but if it does happen, they at least have to have a plan. What they are working on, coming up in sports.
Mothers and fathers of infants in the San Antonio area are being offered a little extra help during the pandemic. It's thanks to a local nonprofit. Because of the tough times right now, it can be often difficult for parents to buy or find what they need for their babies. That's why a new life for a new generation on West Commerce decided to give parents an opportunity to pick up essentials for free. All they have to do, they can go ahead and call our phone number at 210-447-7715 to schedule an appointment, or they can go ahead and come in on one of our uh, diaper days, our walking days. If you're interested in stopping by, here's what you need to know. You can go once a week and get a 20 pack of diapers, wipes and formula, all hard to find these days. All you have to do is take your ID and your child's birth certificate. The organization will be outside today from one until three. In addition, the organization says it's always looking for donations, especially those diapers. Again, this is at no cost and there's no income requirement to collect these supplies. Outside with live cam, it's flat out cold this morning. The wind is blowing like crazy. If you're flying a kite, you better hang on to it. You might just be flying away with it. Always good advice, David. You're right. It was cold this morning. We had wind chills down in the low 40s, even some 30s showing up in the hill country. And we're going to get another chilly morning tomorrow. Uh, Aquifert down four tenths per foot, 673.6 in your pollen count. Not good news. Oak jumped and so did mold. They both jumped up. Uh, oak is now at 4,850 pecan and grass low. We're going to talk about some cold temperatures and some more rain chances coming our way. Coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. I walked outside this morning, walked right back inside and changed. <laughs> I completely forgot how cold it was supposed to be, and it was cold. You asked for summer, did you? I did. Ooh, not well, summer now. It was it was a change, you know, because uh, Easter Sunday was warm, warm and windy. Right. And then that cold front blew through. We got more wind, but this time it was a cold wind, and we had wind chills this morning. It was jacket weather. We'll see it again tomorrow, too, guys. Uh, it was so cold, in fact. We saw some snow this morning up across the Texas Panhandle. Uh, still there, you can see over the last 24 hours, a little bit of snow still falling up there. It was cold enough for that. Uh, and there are uh, winter weather advisories posted for the Texas Panhandle and parts of eastern New Mexico. Meantime, this storm system that brought us a little bit of severe weather uh, Saturday night, and of course a lot of severe weather yesterday, now moving towards the east coast, new tornado watch box that includes New York City. Folks up there don't need any extra hazards to deal with, but they are going to see some stronger storms today. Also, a lot of wind advisories, a lot of wind expected today. Uh, storm reports over the last 24 hours, at least tornado reports, 62 of them over seven states. It was widespread severe weather yesterday and some long track tornadoes. Unfortunately, there were some damage and even some fatalities associated with this. Uh, it is quieting down somewhat there across the southeast as again that storm system moves away. For us, we're also in the wake of that system. And we've got a good northerly wind, clear skies here in South Texas, uh, just a little bit chilly. This is Canadian air that moved in and you can definitely feel it right now. 58 degrees. Dew point is at 35 northerly winds at about 15 miles per hour and temperatures still in the 50s. 52 Bernie stage, 55 Boulevardy mid April. This is this is pretty cool weather. And as we zoom out some 62 Catula, 63 Carrizo Springs, 57 right now in Gonzales. Look at the 24 hour temperature change. Yesterday it was it was warm. Uh, now we're about 23 degrees colder than we were 24 hours ago, and that's pretty consistent here across all of South Texas. Of course, the winds are going to be a big story today. They've been gusting. We saw a gust yesterday evening at 43 miles per hour. Saw some gusts overnight over 30 miles per hour, still gusting to around 25 miles per hour here in San Antonio right now. Uh, I do think the winds will calm some this evening. And especially as we go into tonight, we'll see less wind and tomorrow too. High temperatures today, mid 60s, mid to upper 60s. We're thinking 66, 67 here in San Antonio. And then you'll find some 70s uh, to the south and west, but below average for sure. And then tomorrow morning, we'll see those temperatures slip down into the 40s again. 46 potentially here in San Antonio. We'll see some cooler numbers up across the hill country. 
and uh, we'll see a little bit of extra cloud cover tomorrow probably too. Uh, let's go forward in time here. So this is the big trough that's bringing on the cold weather that moves away. And then as we go into uh, Thursday, basically a uh, status quo here, we'll start to see a little bit more moisture coming in, but we'll be awaiting a little storm system out west. That should make it in by Saturday. We're going to see a cold front, I think, out ahead of that, and then that will slide through. That'll be our next rainmaker. Not a big system, but enough there to give us some rain chances, I think, Saturday and maybe even into Sunday. Forecast temperatures today up around 67, and then we'll fall into the uh, mid-50s tonight. It'll fall off pretty quickly. The winds will as well, but still 15 to 20 through the afternoon. 68 tomorrow, partly cloudy, mostly sunny Wednesday, 71. It'll be a really nice day. We've got mornings in the 40s all the way through Thursday. But the moisture does increase by Thursday into Friday. Maybe a couple showers Friday, depending on when this front gets here. And then I think maybe a little bit cooler Saturday, 30% chance of rain. And then they even some lingering showers potentially into Sunday morning, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. <laughs> the NBA put together a plan for a return in the Spurs Zoo connection. Coming up. Of course, we still don't know when sports is going to return, but the NBA is at least putting together a plan when and if the time comes for them. According to ESPN, executives and trainers are discussing a 25-day plan for the season to resume. The first 11 days will be a series of individual workouts that includes social distancing. After that, there would be a 14-day training camp once they get the clearance to play five-on-five. Five. According to Commissioner Adam Silver, though, there won't be any decisions made until at least May. As the shutdown during the coronavirus pandemic continues, we have seen the stay at home work safe orders affect businesses all over the country and the world. But that doesn't mean we can't help out the places in our community like the zoo. There is a connection between the Spurs and the zoo in more ways than one. Their CEO, Tim Marr, used to be a statistician for the Spurs. He has a massive task to keep the downtown zoo going because they rely on sales during normal operations and donations from the public. For us, every penny uh, counts because we are 100% dependent on people visiting and spending at the zoo. And without that, we don't have income coming in to pay for uh, the animal care staff, the food, the vet care. So we're working with, right now to get donations, raise money any way we can, and really continue the world-class care um, that we provide here to the animals. Myro has a very close connection to the Spurs' Tony Parker, who has a passion for the San Antonio Zoo and the animals. Before I was at the zoo, I was at SeaWorld San Antonio for almost 20 years, and I met Tony probably the second week he was in San Antonio. I was a 19-year-old kid. He was at the front gate, and we recognized him, and I just brought him in, and we've been friends ever since. Uh, about two years before I even came to the zoo, he, he joined the board of San Antonio Zoo. So he has had a long-lived um, love of animals, and SeaWorld we used to do behind the scenes, and he was doing that here and got on our board. He's a great spokesperson. You know, He loves this city. He's living here. He's staying here, and so um, he's helped us with a lot of our exhibits. He's named some animals here after family members and other fun things with us and so he's greatly appreciated as a member of our board and really connecting us to the community on that Spurs level. One of the most watched shows right now on Netflix is the docuseries Tiger King following people who own breed and sell tigers. It's incredibly popular but it's not easy to watch for those who actually work hard to pro properly take care of these animals. What I've been saying is very ironic that we're living this pandemic right now that was ultimately probably started by animal trafficking and somebody eating an animal that had been trafficked into China. And we're being entertained by a movie about animal trafficking. And, and it's, uh, it's hard to watch, but it draws you in and you want to see what's happening. And um, there's such big personalities in that movie that uh, it's, it's interesting to watch. But from a zoological side, it's very hard because of the care we put into our animals here. You remember it wasn't too long ago that we learned that a four-year-old Malayan tiger in the Bronx Zoo been infected with the COVID-19, possibly from an, in, an infected zookeeper. Morrow pointed out that the zoos have been in close contact with each other since all this started to ensure the safety and health of the employees and the animals. Our animal care staff is wearing gloves and masks and, and face masks dealing with our big cats and some other species as of last week before the announcement came out of um, that cat testing positive. But the veterinary world, the zoo world is very close knit. We're all in this together for a mission. And so the communication is 100% open between all of us. And our animals are doing fine here. We have ha had no animals show any symptoms. If you want to help out the San Antonio Zoo, donate to SAZoo.org. Monthly membership start at $3. Adopt an animal. 
Remember, he, he mentioned Tony naming him after uh, naming the little cubs after his family, both his children and his wife. Oh. Are represented the zoo. That's who they, he named the three cubs. He's after. the real Tiger King yeah, he is. or Lion King. <laughs> I will, I'll go with that. Yeah. Still ahead on the news at noon. ConAgra brands recalling some of their power, mo power Bowl meals, what some customers are saying they found in these products still ahead. And many folks in southern states woke up to horrible damage after tornadoes ripped through some cities overnight. Now the coronavirus pandemic is playing a part in the recovery process. Coming up next. New today at five, it's a small business on the city's south side that owes much of its success to distributing and and producing baked goods all across San Antonio. With one month of social distancing in place, the owners of Lux Bakery are doing what they can to stay afloat. How their small business story has changed amid this pandemic. That's Today at Five after Entertainment Tonight. Today, Governor Greg Abbott announced that Goldman Sachs and the Lyft Fund, along with other community development financial institutions, are partnering to provide $50 million in loans to small businesses in Texas. This is to help those that have been affected by COVID-19. The effort, part of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. The loans will primarily be used for payroll so that employees can continue to receive paychecks and small businesses can retain their employees and will be partially or completely forgiven and also during that time the governor gave us an update on some numbers here in texas when it comes to covid 19 133,000 tests have been conducted 13,906 cases of covid 19 287 deaths 1176 hospitalized and 2269 folks have recovered Meantime, nationwide, with 22,000 Americans dead and counting, there is a growing debate about when to ease the restrictions on social distancing. As CNN's Athena Jones reports, this comes after Dr. Anthony Fauci said that if the Trump administration acted earlier to slow the spread of the coronavirus, it might have saved lives. The clock is ticking toward President Trump's possible May 1st target to end the virtual national shutdown. But some state leaders worry a push to ease social distancing could cause even more harm. I fear if we open up too early uh, and we have not sufficiently made that health recovery and cracked the back of this virus, that we could be pouring gasoline on the fire even inadvertently. There's still a long way to go. We're not getting out of this in a couple of weeks or probably even in a couple of months. So we got to yeah. keep this momentum going in New York State, which has the highest number of cases anywhere in the world and the most deaths in the country. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the human cost of the crisis can't be compared to any amount of money lost in the economy. We need a public health strategy that is safe, that is consistent with an economic strategy. The last thing we want to see is an uptick in that infection rate and an uptick in those numbers that we work so hard to bring down. Dr. Anthony Fauci suggesting the easing of some restrictions could happen as soon as next month. It is not going to be a light switch that we say, OK, it is now June, July or whatever. Click the, the, the light switch goes back on. It's going to be depending where you are in the country. But the director of the institute that created models cited by the White House cautions that lifting social distancing protocols too soon could be detrimental. We don't think the capability in the states exists yet to deal with that volume of cases. And so by July or August, we could be back in the same situation we are now. A New York Times report this weekend outlined cases of the president downplaying warnings from top health officials on the dangers of a possible pandemic, saying it took Trump three weeks after the first recommendation to implement national social distancing strategies. Fauci admitting beginning mitigation efforts earlier could have saved additional American lives. But what goes into those kinds of decisions is, is complicated. Obviously, if we had right from the very beginning shut everything down, it may have been a little bit different. But there was a lot of pushback about shutting things down back then. Some of the people who attended religious services this Easter Sunday could be hearing from the Justice Department pretty soon. Spokeswoman Carrie Kupek tweeted on Saturday that social distancing policies must be applied even handedly. Meanwhile, action is expected this week from Attorney General William Barr. Many states have put stay at home orders in place due to the coronavirus outbreak, but some states have exceptions for religious activities. 
The U.S. government has the ability to limit assemblies like religious gatherings if it protects health. Devastating weather blew through parts of the South overnight. At least 40 tornadoes reported across six southern states in just 24 hours. Officials are saying that restrictions from the pandemic is making their response even more complicated. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest on the devastation. Overnight waves of tornadoes ripping through the South, killing people in Mississippi, Georgia, and South Carolina. We just got a, another trash call. Apparently a tree went in the house. There's supposed to be four kids inside the house. They can't get out. In Upson County, Georgia, this house lifted off its foundation and dropped in the road. While in Chattanooga, Tennessee, our affiliate station WTVC's Bliss Zeckman reporting from inside her own devastated home. It took our roof off. That tree almost went through our house, but by the grace of God, did not. This warehouse demolished the debris submerged in floodwaters. My wife was scared and I've just kept telling her it's going to be okay. Mississippi saw winds peaking as high as 205 miles per hour in Monroe, Louisiana, one of the city's hardest hit by a tornado. We had to rescue like four little infants and two ladies. I heard this really loud bang, but I didn't expect this type of destruction when I came outside. Alabama, Louisiana and Mississippi all declaring a state of emergency, but the response was made even more complicated by the ongoing pandemic. Some leaders hesitant to use shelters because of social distancing recommendations, though Mississippi's executive director of emergency management saying. But at the end of the day, uh, life safety had to persist over everything else. And um, the, the, the greater risk of the tornado had to overcome the COVID. Tornado watches persisted through the morning across several states. These storms left 750,000 people without power at a time when millions are being told to stay home. Trevor All, ABC News, New York. Live look outside with live cam, absolutely pretty. You would think we were in the middle of summer if you didn't see the little bug in the corner of your screen where it says 58 degrees. Uh, it's, it's cool out there. It's in the wake of that system. You, you just saw the report there, all the damages across the south. Very sad situation there. And we came out of it mostly unscathed. We got a little bit of, well, obviously, some March yell there around uh, Del Rio. A couple reports of some tornadoes as you get up towards Blanco County and Gillespie County. But thankfully, we missed out by and large on a lot of that severe weather. This morning sunrise, gorgeous. Uh, take a look at that. That is sent in by Ronnie Pullen. Just a great shot. We had clear skies. It was chilly, though. It was jacket weather uh, with temperatures in the 40s. Take a look at the lows. 46 here in San Antonio, 40 in Kerrville, 39 in Fredericksburg, 46 in Hondo, 37 in Rock Springs. A very cold morning by April standards. And temperatures this afternoon should rebound nicely into the 60s. We're thinking 67 here in San Antonio, 63 in New Braunfels, 63 in Gonzales. Some 70s on the map, too, as you get out to the west. But clear skies go around and lots of wind. Uh, winds are going to be gusty through the afternoon. Temperatures up to 67, falling down to 60 by 7 o'clock. Northerly winds will calm, I think, as we get towards the 8, 9, 10 o'clock hour. 56 degrees at 10 o'clock with clear skies. And look for some, some more cool weather tomorrow and some pretty nice weather through most of the week before rain chances return. We've got to look at the seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. You can now buy guns at a drive through The federal government signed off on a new rule that allows gun dealers to provide a drive-up or walk-up service. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives said the move is in response to questions about how gun dealers can sell the weapons during the pandemic. The guns must be bought on the gun dealer's property. Last month, the FBI reported more than 3 million background checks as people rushed to get weapons during the COVID-19 crisis. Now to a recall alert, ConAgra Brands now recalling nearly 31,000 pounds of healthy choice frozen chicken bowls because there could be rocks in the meals. The specific products being recalled are healthy choice power bowls, chicken, feta and farro. The company says they have received customer complaints about small rocks being in the product. ConAgra says so far, though, no one's gotten hurt. However, it's still warning people not to eat these frozen dishes. The USDA says that the chicken bowls were produced on January 23rd this year. They have a best buy date of October 19th. ConAgra brand says customers looking for a refund should reach out to its customer care department. Making sure your kids stay occupied while under quarantine. Up next on the news at noon, a few tips on adjusting to 
this big transition. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. With most schools closed for the time being because of COVID-19 and so many parents now at home with their children, it leaves us asking, how are we going to keep them occupied? With more, here's ABC News' Inez de la Catera. For children, the American Academy of Pediatrics emphasizes that routine is key, which in turn helps them feel safe and reduces anxiety. It is a big transition for them to not be at school with their friends and teachers and now at home with just their parents and potentially their siblings. Having a structured schedule will be very familiar since they are used to being at school with set times for classes, lunch and recess. Just as important as implementing a schedule is involving your kids with making Making that plan. Just like adults, the children are more invested in the things they have had a hand in creating. So ask your child how they would want to spend their day. Make sure to try and include some body movement every day, whether it's an at-home workout together or an outside walk, being sure to keep at least six feet of distance from other people. With more time at home, kids may also want to spend more time with screens, playing online games or watching TV. Whenever possible, try to make screen time a family activity by playing online games together and try to make this time structured and limited. And don't forget to use video chats as a way for them to stay in touch with family and friends. With this Medical Minute, I'm Inez de la Quatera. Outside with live cam, didn't you say you dressed for summer this morning? And I, go back I tell you, I, I walked outside and I said, well, gee, I got to warm up my car. I mean, we're back in winter. Get the heater, make sure it works. Huh? Yeah, you may, you may have to use the heater this morning. It was that cold. Temperatures in the 40s. We started off at 46. If you were curious, not record territory. 35 was a record low. That was back in 1940. And we've been as warm as 100. That was back in 1982. Highs today will only be in the 60s. Not bad at all. Uh, uh, we're thinking the mid to upper 60s for highs. Uh, obviously, no rainfall today. We do have some slight chances down the line. We'll talk about it coming up. So if the kids would have been going to school today, they need a <laughs> jacket at the bus stop or on their walk. But I guess you know this no that's one of those weird things now. The the kids yeah. don't leave the house in the morning. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of sad we haven't got to use our school bus graphic in a while now. One of these days we'll get to break it back out. But for now, uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about severe weather, guys, because it, it, we had some of our own here. Not a lot Saturday night. We had some hail in Del Rio. I had a couple of reports of tornadoes around here, mainly north of San Antonio. But the big story was yesterday, uh, a ton of tornadoes across the southeast, some long track tornadoes. And unfortunately, there were some injuries and fatalities from this. Uh, by my tally, 65 tornado reports over the last 48 hours or so across seven states. And it did start here in Texas. Uh, we got the storms initially. And there were a couple reports of tornadoes up there across uh, parts of Blanco and Gillespie counties. They're still going to go out and survey this and make sure that this was the case, but a little bit of damage reported there. But the big time tornadoes were here across the south, Mississippi, Alabama, parts of Tennessee, Georgia, all the way up into the Carolinas. Today, there was still severe weather as of this morning. Now, this storm system finally, finally is starting to move off the east coast, and that's great news uh, as, uh, as drier air spreads in across a large portion of the, the southeast. So here in Texas, too, you got that red coil. That's a drier, more stable air coming in, and that is uh, moving towards Carolinas. Now, there is still going to be some severe weather today, I think, up across the northeast. There's tornado watch box up there, gusty winds, too. So this was a wide-ranging system. Uh, here in town, clear skies, 58 degrees at the airport, 58 Port SA, 58 Stinson. Popular number 56 at Randolph. Northerly winds at about 15 miles per hour. Winds are still gusty, but not as strong as they were this morning. We had a gust at the airport of about 36 miles per hour when this front initially blew through. It was windy for Easter yesterday too. Some of those eggs weren't staying in place; they're blowing away. Uh, but uh, we're seeing we're going to see the winds die down this evening. 58 degrees right now in New Braunfels. 56 Bolverde. 55 right now Bernie Stage. Still pretty cool out there. A lot of places still in the 50s. Uh, 60 though in Uvalde, 63 Carrizo Springs, and there's a look at the 24 hour temperature change. Pretty incredible. 23 degrees cooler than it was 24 hours ago. So this was a significant front 
uh, that came through last night. There's a look at the wind gusts. Still up around 20, 25 miles per hour. These numbers are down, though. We were seeing some 30 mile per hour wind gusts around 9 o'clock this morning. So a slow improvement here. And that's what the computer models are showing, that these winds will finally die down sometime around 5, 7 o'clock tonight. And then eventually overnight, we'll see it go into the 5 to 10 mile per hour range. That is going to allow for some cold temperatures tomorrow morning, though. Uh, be aware, we're going to be back in the 40s uh, to start your Tuesday. High temperatures today, 67 here in town, 60s, maybe even some 50s for highs up there around Fredericksburg. And as we look at the upper level winds going forward, uh, pretty quiet weather in the next couple of days. Now, we'll watch a couple of storm systems, one initially that comes across the middle part of the country. That should pull a front through. And then we'll get another little system behind that that should kick up some showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms as we get into Saturday. We'll be able to re refine that forecast as we get a little bit closer to the weekend, but there are some rain chances there. Not today. Clear skies, 67 degrees, northerly winds, 15 to 20 miles per hour lows tomorrow morning in the 40s in a lot of spots. 46 here in San Antonio is what we're forecasting. 68 for a high tomorrow, partly cloudy. 71 Wednesday, more clouds Thursday and more humidity. And then there are those rain chances. Just a slight chance Friday, maybe a little better chance on Saturday. Guys. All right, Justin, thank you. The Queen of Tejano is still having an impact on music lovers today. The film, based on her life, made Jennifer Lopez a household name, but not everyone in the Quintanilla family wanted her to star in the film. Coming up. Do you want me to tell you the whole story about how he came in? Edward James almost came in? Let's hear it. <laughs> Aside from Texans and Tejano music lovers, most of the world wouldn't come to know Selena Quintanilla until the film about her life came out in 1997, two years after her death. Many credit the film as a rise to stardom for Jennifer Lopez. The role won her a handful of awards, including a Golden Globe. But as Abraham Quintanilla so candidly shared with us, if it were up to him, someone else would have gotten the role. You know that she was not my first choice. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a little uh, insight into this. We had casting in six cities, and I like this girl that came out of the Miami, Florida casting. Now, this girl amazingly looks so much like Selena physically, but she didn't have any acting experience. So what we done is we had casting in six cities and we picked one girl from each city and we took them to Hollywood. And each girl was given a small part of the script for the movie mm -hmm. and they had to act it out. And they're filming them. It's called a, 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 a cut, a screen test. screen test. And each girl was given a screen test. And the girl that I liked no acting experience. She was so nervous, she couldn't even talk. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, some people, uh, their nerves affect their breathing. She couldn't even breathe. And I felt sorry for her because she really, really looked like Selena, physically. Mm -hmm. So we went on with all the girls. We started at around 7 o'clock that morning t testing these girls. And as it turned out, Jennifer was the last one. And now it's about seven or eight o'clock at night. So now it's Jennifer's turn, and she'd done it in three takes. So they pulled me aside and said, Mr. Quintanilla, she doesn't look exactly like Selena, but with makeup and clothing, we'll make her look like Selena. That's Hollywood, typical Hollywood. <laughs> and we were tired, I was tired. I said, all right, let's go with her. And look where she's at now. What did you think of her final product for the movie? I think she done a great job. And I think that everybody feels the same way. What about Edward James Olmos? <laughs> Online right now, you can watch our Siempre Selena special. The hour-long special aired last night, but you can catch it today. Just head over to KSET.com if you missed it. And uh, for more 
KSAT TV extras, like an extended interview with Chris Perez. There's <coughs> music videos, and uh, you can download the app on your Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, or on Smart TV and catch it all. All right, it's time to zoom in to Mike and Fiona. Is it on? Can you hear us? Can you, hey. I think they can see us. I think they can see us. Yeah. Okay, hi. Hey, Perfect. hi, guys. Hi. Hey, you know what we're doing right now, this video chat stuff, yep. it can be a little challenging navigating all of this, but we have you covered today with the do's and don'ts of video conferencing. Hmm, but then there's the pet peeves about video chatting like this. Do you have pet peeves about this? Uh, well, you know, it's hard for me to, because I want to look at, at the camera up here, yeah. but then I want to look down here and, you know. Well, and you also can't, you know, kind of give the eye roll to somebody else when somebody else says something and you're in the room in a meeting like we do sometimes, right? <laughs> Not that we actually do. Oh, wait, hi. Yes, they are watching it. So anyway. <laughs> Plus, we need, we know you need a boost at home right now. Okay, mm -hmm. so we want to share the sunshine and happiness with your Easter pictures from the weekend. Oh, of course, so many people with the little ones, with little bunny ears and all that stuff. Hey, post your photos to our Facebook and Twitter pages at SA Live KSAT, and we'll try to air some of those a little bit later on the show. Hey, we had a great time at Easter, did you? <laughs> Oh, yes. Very, oh, very, very, it was a very nice weekend, you oh, know, good. as good as it could be with everything. And how about some boozy bread that you can make at home? Yes, we are going to share a recipe that we loved before so you can see it again. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. So stick around. Wait, do we leave the meeting now? I think. I, what?